Beckham celebrates Palm Sunday from Mallorca in Songs of Praise. Now on BBC Two, in the final programme of the series, Peter Purvis and Jessica Home take a fond look back at the canine event of the year, Crufts 97. Welcome to our last program from Crufts. Today we'll be looking back to more of the best of the utility, the gun dog and the working groups. We'll also be seeing the agility final. More of the obedience championship. But first we go to the fun of the final of Flyball. And we look in the third place playoff, the two defeated semi-finalists, the Rugby Reds, who are on the near side against Presbury on the far side. Just a single leg, this runoff for third and fourth place. Four hurdles and a fly ball box. And in the lead at the moment, rugby have taken it up. A good changeover after their third dog. Fourth dog to go if it doesn't make a mistake. Rugby are going to get that third place. Going the long way around there, but coming through to win. Very comfortable win for rugby. They take third place. Presbury are in fourth. But of course, the main meat of the event is the actual final itself. And that's going to be between the two winning semi-finalists, Daventry and Wilton. Daventry, of course, they beat Rugby, Wilton beat Presbury, and now they race it off over three legs to determine the winner of the fly ball. Daventry with the yellow stripes, we're looking at Wilton here. Wilton nearest the camera, Daventry farthest away. And it's Daventry who take the first lead on this opening leg. Beautifully out there. And the lead increasing. Daventry are such a good side. Always feature here or hereabouts in the finals. And they're opening up an even bigger lead. There was a mistake by the Wilton team. This is the fourth dog for Daventry. They're going to win the first leg very easily. Daventry then lead 1-0 in this best of three final. They're sorting out the uh, balls ready to put them into the fly ball box whilst we watch another elegant catch. And this is the first dog for Daventry in this second leg. First two were neck and neck collecting the ball, but Daventry have now opened out a lead, very fast turnover. And the lead increases again. This has exactly the same pattern we had in the first leg. Are we going to need three legs, I wonder? Daventry's lead increasing again. And it's a clean finish, that's terrific. Daventry going to take the title. Great stuff. Tremendous applause. Great entertainment for the crowd. Elegant dogs enjoying themselves. Confirmation of the result. First Daventry, second Wilton, third rugby, fourth Prestbury. That is such an exciting event to watch, and the crowd always love it. Now, our next group of top show dogs don't fit easily into any of the other five groups. They were bred to carry out a wide variety of different functions. It's the utility group. And the group judge, Claire Coxall, has the distinction of a best in show at Crufts in 1966 to her name with an apricot toy poodle. It's not a poodle she's looking at now. It's champion Loris, star performer, Busby, a two-and-a-half-year-old Boston Terrier. He made the long trip from Midlothian in Scotland with his owner, Sheila Borthwick, one of several Terriers not to be in the Terrier group. Dead right, it's the Boston is the national dog of the USA and gives the impression of being ready to outsmart anyone. Very cocky little chap, plenty of body on this one, and he stayed on his toes throughout proceeding, moving with a neat, clipped style. Minar here was bought as a family pet, but this uh, German Spitz of the Klein variety is a real veteran. Now nine and a half, 
She's won her best of breed at Crufts twice before for owner Fran Baird of Wimborne Minster in Dorset. It's a small dog, but it's got an enormous kennel name. Lurivas Minna the Minx at Wentgard. Well, we both liked this bitch when we saw her in the ring earlier. And she's owned by a lady who used to have some extremely good caissons. Lovely dogs they were. She stands very, very nice and square. She's got a lovely expression. She moves around that ring with absolutely smart precision. A typical German Spitz. Very high on her toes as well. This is the Mittel, the other variety of German Spitz. Bobby, or great name coming up, Windley the Crowman. He's three years old. He's owned by Mr. and Mrs. Beard from Selston in Nottinghamshire. Pat Beard admits quite freely she didn't expect to win on the day. Well, I'm surprised, man. The Klein, of course, can be up to 11 and a half inches of the withers, and the middle starts at 12. So often one sees two dogs standing next to each other, and there isn't more than an inch between them. Again, this is a well made dog with, if anything, a longer standoff coat. Lovely name for a little dark dog, isn't it? That's super. Absolutely. Crowman. Crowman. Windley the Crowman. Well, this is the baby of the group, only 16 months old. The miniature Schnauzer is known by owners Steve and Caroline Waring from Cheltenham as Lewis or Louis. Registered with the Kennel Club as Scanson's Toy Boy at Cascade, he won Bus Puppy in Show at the Northern Schnauzer Club Show. It's a nice looking dog, isn't it? Yes, it is. We see a lot of the pepper and salt coloured Schnauzers in this mini version, but we don't often get a chance to clap eyes on a black. At one time, they were much more in demand. This fellow came into the country through quarantine, so perhaps we may be going to see more blacks in the future. He's no different in standard, but optically, it's sometimes quite difficult to check. Now, Mary Dietz from Thetford in Norfolk owns this Skippicky. Buddy, he's three years old, and Mary admits that, like all Skippickies, he's got the attention span of a gnat. So that means he probably wouldn't be able to concentrate long enough to hear his full name, which is champion Fran Howell Black Minstrel for Aradut. Yes, well, some people think that the thick, powerful neck of this Skip makes him look a bit stumpy, but to me, when he's as well-balanced as this little fellow is, he's the breed standard brought to life. Sparkling eyes, neat, erect ears, a warm, close-fitting jacket, and a trim way of going. A very nice dog indeed. It's a good one for Mary. Now, this is a German-bred Tibetan terrier. Champion Hotang Haruka of Willowbray, or Rookie, thank goodness he's called Rookie, is six. And he's special to own the Judith Robin Smith from East Sussex in that, although she chose him as a puppy, she didn't bother importing him into this country until he was ten-month-old. Now, he's turned out to be an absolute charmer. Well, he's a very good advertisement for the fact that quarantine doesn't do a lot of harm because he came in through quarantine. He doesn't seem to be any the worse for the experience. I like TTs, especially if they look as if the wind blows through their rigging heartily. And this one seems a free and easy fellow with a typical head and very bright eyes. Smash in. Winning his first challenge certificate on Friday at Crufts brings Paddington into the group judging. He's a Tibetan Spaniel, Inglespan Razmataz for Langshi. Only 20 months old, he's owned by Julie Carter from Marlborough in Wiltshire. He's only 20 months old, yep. this gentle-headed dog. Uh, he's lovely, sired by one of the best-looking stud dogs in his breed. Looks like one who could go on to even greater things as he matures. One of my favourite breeds, possessed of a delightfully mischievous nature once he's got to know you and stops being standoffish. That's right, you have to persuade them to like you, don't you? <laughs> well, one of my favourites is this giant, the Leonberger. Managard, away we go to Jacolda, is four and a half with a pet name of Fudge. Dave Killerly handles her for owners Dave and Joan Rushby of Glossop in Derbyshire. And apparently, believe it or not, this was the runt of a litter. But what a beautiful animal she's become. Well, they managed to rear the runt pretty well, didn't they? A rapidly improving bitch, this with a gentle temperament, as that head and expression suggests. Lovely, great shambling dogs with the look of the Newfoundland about them. Never seem to be in a hurry, but if they are on sentry duty, they can get up a fair head of steam when appropriately persuaded. But as you'll have seen in our live programmes, Judge Claire Coxall chose eight very different utility dogs for her final selection. And the winner, no doubt at all, was this one, Paris, the three-year-old Japanese Akita bitch. <laughs> Carl and Shirley Jones, magnificent champion Octumi, love action.
You're the best thing. Dav Carr, Mr. Bombastic, so fantastic. Redwich strike up the band for Silverhawk, which is slightly unusual, I suppose. Beryl Apparel, beautiful. Sleeps on the bed, in the bed. You can probably guess why he's called Rug, because he basically looks like one. But this is our first time doing obedience. There are six disciplines in the obedience competition. The send away, distant control, retrieve, heel work, scent, and the stays, sit and down. The dog who loses the least points wins. Our expert Sandy Wadhams thinks the competition will be tighter with the dogs than it was with the bitches. Oh, definitely, because I think the dogs are much stronger in depth and you'll find the marks will be a lot closer. All right, tips for the top? My very favorite, Jean Duncan with Chad, Stella with Callum, and Jack of Clubs, Gail Waddington. Now, you haven't tipped yourself there, which I suppose is fair enough, but it's going to be quite an emotional day for you, because you are going to be out there. Yes, very emotional for me. I'm retiring my dog, Ricky. He's been a great champion, and I'm going to miss him a lot. And it's Sandy who gets things started, demonstrating the send-away with obedience champion, Colali Rocky. Forward towards the markers. 11 and a half years old, he's still as fast and keen as ever. Concentration on Sandy's face. Right turn. Ricky's actually won 23 challenge certificates in his career. He's been one of the top winning dogs in the past right few turn. years. Call your dog. Nice collection. Right Look at the turn. speed on him. Big smile on his face, too. That's lovely to see. Halt. Exercise finished. Dodwell Callum had a slightly disappointing send away, but he made up for it on the distant control. About turn and halt. Now remember, this dog's a previous Crufts winner. The most One. important thing is that he mustn't move more than a body length from that spot. Three. Six. That's lovely. Look at those front paws. Four. Five. Six. Back to the same place. Six. And return to your dog. So, full marks for distant control, and Callum had only lost two points after the second discipline, an excellent position to be in. Exercise finished. Now, this is the retrieve, and this is Jack of Clubs, a horsey theme Ready? this year with our Last judges' enthusiasms. The retrieve article Throw was a off. stirrup. Stewart's coming out there to move the article onto an exact spot because sometimes people throw slightly to the left, slightly to the right, Send depending on where their dog likes to retrieve from. They might get a better result. The judge wants them to go straight out and come straight back. Take it. This dog had had full points on distant control and only finished. lost one on the send away. So with a good retrieve, he's in an excellent position. Exercise finished. This is Jolly Tolly Tank with D. Stedman. Send your dog. And they had a good send away, losing only half a point. Forward towards the markers. Nice and precise, good concentration on the dog's face there, paying attention. Halt. They put up a good show in the and retrieve and distant Forward. control, so some good heel work would put Circle them in a strong right. position. They actually lost nine and a half points here. Circle left. Circle left. But in today's judge's opinion, the best heel work came from Pip Ryan Primo Edition. He'd Circle had a poor right. send away, which had put him out of contention for the top places, but his heel work was a delight to watch. He's Towards almost me. welded to his owner's leg. Right turn. So close. First position coming. One. About turn. And very precise. About turn and pick up. Nice neat pick up. Into the figure of eight. This is last year's winner, Take a Walk Zach with Dot Watt. They had the second best heel work of the competition. A very steady Towards dog me. and an experienced handler. Of course, that combination's always going to help. Nonetheless, they did Ask lose eight and a half points Throw on the heel article. work, and this is earlier on where they lost just one point on the retrieve. A straight throw out, but still the steward places the article on exactly the right spot. Wild blue Send eyes waiting to go.
Zach had had an excellent distant control too, and he actually went into the lead for the second year running. Take so an it. exciting time for Dot. And finish. Nicely done. This is Sandy's favourite, Chad of Skipton. They'd had a poor send away, but let's see if they can do better at distant control. About turn and hold. One. Down. Two. Yes. The intensity of concentration Three. on that dog's face. Four. Down. Five. Six. Yes. Return to your dog. Beautifully done. Full marks there, so if he continues in this vein, then he could be up there with the leaders. Exercise finished. So the placings so far show that it is really hard to split the top winning dogs here because the standard is so high. Just half a point separating Jolly Tolly Tank from the leader so far, Take a Walk Zack. So we move on to our next test, the scent. This time, the cloths were placed in a C. There were some gaps there and that's because out come the decoys and the judges cloth, which is the furthest away from you at the top of the C there, just one in the most important one. That's the one they'll all be heading for. Lying in second place, so it's absolutely crucial. This is Jolly Tolly Tank again. Now, scent can be this dog's weakness. So that's giving the owner heart attacks before you even start. Sandy dog. Going out with plenty of enthusiasm, whizzing round that sea. And now starting to work the cloths. Nice and methodical. Gone over the decoys. That's the one. Picks up the judge's cloth. And presents it. Take it. Oh, oh, oh he's hanging on to it, though. He's going to lose a little for that. Exercise finish. And it was one point lost. <laughs> this is Brimo Magic Jason, who seemed to get horrendously confused by this test. He's working away there, and he's got the correct cloth. But unfortunately, he returns it to the judge. I mean, that's appropriate. That's where the scent came from, and he's got that on his mind. But eventually, he takes it back to his owner. Take it. And, finish. and the audience loved it. Exercise finish. So did the judge. Now, take a walk, Zach is our leader, obviously trying to stay in the lead, so it's very important they get a good scent. Send your dog. He's got to keep his head. Dot's got to keep hers, too. Methodically round those cloths. And just before he got to the judges one, he turned back, but that's perfectly okay, so long as he's working with method. Yes, that's the right one. Take it, and finish. And a nice test, so Zach is now our clear leader. Exercise finish. As we go into the final tests. And that's the stays. The sit stay, everybody passed clear, so it was all on the down. There's Zach getting his final commands. You stay there, mate, glued to the floor. This is important. And now all the handlers commanded to leave the ring, and they're going to be out of sight in the collecting ring for 10 minutes, which is an absolute age in which the dogs could be distracted by ambient noise, by something moving in the crowd. Finally, everybody gets to come back into the ring, but the dogs mustn't react. They've got to stay there until the test is finished. But that was it. No points lost for obedience champion Take a Walk Zach and Dot Watts. <laughs> Celebrations all round, confirming those two as the winners. The first time in 34 years that a dog has won the championship two years in a row.
Now, the gun dog group judge Roy Harrison has had success with four different breeds in his career, English setters, pointers, Welsh springers, and the Cavalier King Charles. But here he is looking at the Brittany. This particular one is imported from a working kennel in France. She's called Ivory, or Ivory de Caranluan, and she's three and a half. She comes with her owner, Patricia Rush, from Halesworth in Suffolk. A breed which contrasts in structure with most others in the group in having a somewhat squarer frame than the Spaniel, such as the Welsh Springer. This leads to a clipped fashion of movement which makes for a very busy looking dog. This bitch, as Peter said, is an import from the continent and British breeders have turned time and again to buy good French stock. Mm, I think that's a beauty. This is a young Clumber Spaniel, but already a show champion. Tweedsmuir High Society, or Haley, only 18 months old. Owned in partnership with uh, Ronnie Watts, who lives in South Africa, and by Hilda Monaghan from Wisbeach. I've got to say, this bitch looks uh, to have a really big future. Well, it's the heavyweight of the Spaniels, the Clumber, but if you looked at its head, it had lovely eyes, clearer in shape than many, and it goes round the ring without too much of the role. A splendid specimen, in my opinion, and it did please a great number of the crowd that was watching on Gun Dog Day. Such an unfortunate name, Clumber, isn't it? Mm. It's just a lumbering, loafing sort indeed, of dog. Indeed it does. Nantdu Kiwi of Kashmir is five, owned by Mrs. Westerman from Bridgewater in Somerset, and he's another of the eight Spaniel breeds included in the group. This time, it's the Field Spaniel. Glorious liver colour. I think they're absolutely lovely dogs, and they can be easily mistaken for a cocker, but slightly longer in the body, this super liver colour, which of course you don't see in the cocker, clean line of head, and looks as if he could do a day's work if he was asked to. He really moves well, doesn't he? He does. He's got beautiful fringing there, beautifully presented, a lovely dog. So too is the Gordon Setter. This one is the breed record holder with over 43 cc's and was Dog World's top gun dog in 1995. Show champion Lyric High Society, or Bracken, is now seven and a half, and owner Maureen Justice from Buntingford in Hertfordshire says she is a very special friend. Well, the Lyrics have always been at the top of the tree in the Gordon Setter. It's the heavyweight hunter of the setters with an appearance of a solid body and limbs much harder to get a gleam from the more sombre colouring of the Gordon, but in bright sunlight on the moors, this bitch would be a striking sight. Yes, they're quite spectacular, aren't they? She's gorgeous. Now, this one is Peggy Steele's first show champion at the age of 75. Troy is a three-year-old Hungarian Vistler, and he's shown in the ring by his breeder, Larry Wilkes. And Troy's full name is Nikhil's Polestar of Streamhawk. A positive golden gleam in the sunlight if you're out on a summer's day with one of these dogs. It's one of the sights of the Hunt Point and Retrieve collection. The Wiesler's physique under that fine short coat is all there, plain for anybody to see. And here's a breed where owners seem to work at getting them really fit. Now, Joshua, the Irish setter, is almost nine now and has an amazing track record for his owner, Bonnie Andrews of Wokingham. With 27 cc's to his name, I should think show champion Mark's way Marquis is well within his rights to demand, as he does, pieces of kidney in the ring whilst he's competing. Well, that's all right as long as they're not being put into his mouth just as the judge is walking up to him. This is the Flash Harry of them all, the original wild Irishman. Not a dog to win an obedience competition, but one to last all day on the grass moors of Shap. Glamour personified to the nth degree. One of the smashers, I think. Yes, never fail to draw a big crowd. Delightful. Now one of the larger, heavier gun dogs, the Italian Spinoni. Show champion Roscali Andrio, he's known as George, three and a half years old, comes from King's Heath in Birmingham, where he lives with owners Joe and Elaine Kirkham, and he's their first champion. Peter, I find it, this breed invites you to laugh at him because one moment <laughs> his moustaches are turned down dismally and the next he's herring all over the fields in a fit of wild enthusiasm which defies you to catch him at all. A solid workmanlike chap with massive hairy webbed feet. Now this is a fabulous Labrador, I think. Show champion Rocheby Polkadot. She's called Polly, three years old, was also best of breed last year at Crufts and second in the group. Handled by Marion Hopkinson from Doncaster and owned by her and her husband, David. The biggest entry of any breed in the whole show, there's always criticism that show labs are overweight, but this is a bitch which, to me, combines femininity with style. 
I think a lot of people expected it to be called out again into the full glare of the lights in the centre of the main ring for the final line-up, but she wasn't to be. No, we were surprised at that. Certainly we expected her to be in there. But in fact, Judge Roy Harrison, he chose eight very different but splendid gun dogs for his final selection, from which he chose the best of the group, show champion Bod of Pistols at Dawn with Afterglow, the American Cocker Spaniel Dexter, 20 months old, and owner Mike Gadsby. Now the action really hots up as we reach the final stage of the agility competition. In last week's programme, we showed you the first two rounds of the final, which left us with this situation. Bretford were leading, Peter Lee second, Presbury Park third, Chippenham in fourth place. It's the same course. We now go to round three. Chippenham, who were in fourth place, go first. This is Tidy with Barbara Cranfield. If you're watching last week, you'll know that this course is fast, consists of a lot of straight lines, but a fair amount of difficulty where the control must be given by the handler, otherwise the dogs can go wrong. The tidy coming around pretty quickly, and it's a good time to the table. Here they have to be down for a count of five, and that's a very fast time to there, so this is a good round so far. The judge, Dave Perry, from Derbyshire, he set the course, and uh, it's proving to be a good one, as I've said. And round this course, oh, and that's a wrong course. That, well, that's total disaster in agility because they get 200 faults for that, and that means elimination. There's no way they can come back from that. So poor old Tidy is eliminated, and it does mean that Chippenham will certainly not go anywhere other than fourth place. Very disappointing for them there, but this, the course goes round to the left, and the control wasn't there. The dog saw the jump ahead and went for it. Very sad. And that, in fact, there you can see the tunnel. That's where Tidy should have gone. Presbury Park now. Here, there, and everywhere with Julian McLean. Wait! Jesse, wait! And uh, wait! obviously it needs a lot of vocal wait! constraint. The time for this course, 55 yeah! seconds. And uh, it seemed to be, in the first two rounds, reasonably generous. But obviously this is a dog that uh, struggles to make those contact points if it isn't tightly controlled. But still, it's relatively fast. Oh, mistake on the table. Julia reckons that uh, the dog likes the next obstacle best, thoroughly enjoys the weave. Still got its worst one to come, which is the well. Could easily make a mistake there. But anyway, five faults so far. Well, doesn't want the same mistake and has to get that control, but that's the correct course. Yes, gently on the seesaw, through the well, and that's it. Oh, get over the line. Well, they have done 49.32. Plenty of time there. The total there, 15 faults, is the cumulative score for the team. But here's how here, there, and everywhere managed to pick up five faults straight on and straight off the table. Peter Lee next, Jeannie and Hazel Barker. Wait, wait. They've been doing this uh, discipline for four years. According to Hazel, Jeannie likes all the obstacles. Well, no accounting for taste. Nicely settled in there. Not terribly fast, but good enough. 55 seconds seems to be plenty to get round here, even taking it easy. Peter Lee were in second place after the first two rounds. And a clear round here will certainly keep them in that position and could even advance them into first. Nicely over the seesaw, through the well, through the tyre. That's a good finish, 46.8, good time. Very healthy, and the team as a whole have no faults. Three dogs have gone clear. Excellent run there. You can see how the dogs enjoy it. Their tails wag, the eyes are bright. But Lucy Lastic here concentrating at the start for Bretford, who were in the lead. Stay, stay. Steve Baldwin, very experienced handler. We've seen him many times here in the finals at Crofts. Stay. Bretford is a team Stay. in Coventry, and Steve used to work his dogs for rugby. Back, back. But this is certainly quite a slow round as Down. far as the table, but it's accurate, Down. and that, of course, is very important. Down. It's probably a, a reasonably new experience for Steve, because uh, he used to use German Shepherds in agility. Last year was his first year with a collie. And Lucy through. Lastic is certainly doing Lucy well. Back. Lucy back. Clear so far. 
and if the time isn't too slow, it could well be that Brentford stay in the lead after this third round. That's a good one on the seesaw. This is nice. Plenty of time. No problem with the time at all. 219.36. Brentford will stay in the lead. And here's confirmation of that situation after the third round. Brentford lead, Peter Lee second, Presbury Park third, Chippenham are in fourth place. So it'll be Chippenham who lead off in the fourth round. This is Peggy Sue with Roger Blake. Working Sheepdog is seven years old. And it's the third year that Peggy has qualified for the agility competitions at Crufts. It is a difficult course, this, because the, there are so many opportunities for the dogs to make mistakes. But this is both accurate and fast. Chippenham trying to redeem themselves a little after that unfortunate third round. This way. Certainly a vocal animal. This way. And a vocal Roger Blake. This, this is the important one, turning left. Don't go over that jump, jump. and Peggy didn't. Excellent. Oh, that's a good round. No further mistakes there. No faults on that round, but the total for the team, of course, 210. Well, that's a lovely finish. Good, clean jumping. Very good. Presbury Park next. This is J.C. Sproglet with Greg Dennett. Great name, isn't it? J.C. Sproglet. This is the first time that this team from uh, Presbury Park have worked together. And the hand there, I think there was a problem with that. Now, it may be that J.C. Sproglet jumped off the A-frame a little too soon, didn't make contact, but uh, we'll check that in the slow motion later. At the moment, there's a good time around to the table, but still, it's a slowish round. It'll still get in the time limit without any great problem. It is a generous time limit on what is a very difficult course. But I think there's five penalties there. I'm pretty certain that uh, the A-frame was not completed properly. They must make contact with all of the points. Well, the five points have been signaled there. Just see, just check this. Yes, jumped off before the red point, and you see the judge's hand coming up there. So an extra five faults for J.C. Sproglet. Peter Lee now, their final dog is Tan with Pat Brown. Peter Lee did very well last year. They were second here in the agility final in 1996. Now, this is a super dog, very fast. They need a fast time because they were in second place to Brentford by about six or seven seconds after round three, so they need a fast time, and this is fast. That's as quick as we've seen, I think. Wonderful through the weave. If they can be accurate, then they're really going to put the pressure on Brentford with just one dog to go. Oh, this is terrific. I'm told that Tan likes watching himself on uh, television doing agility well that's brilliant excellent round look at that through the weave concentration sweeping through that's brilliant well it set the target for Bretford they need to go quickly and accurately if they're going to stay in the lead their last dog Lakeland Heath with Graham Whale well, now walk, 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 walk. this dog's been doing agility for nine years on that come, basis come, one can't come. expect it to be quite as quick wait, as Tan was wait. But is it going to be accurate? Over. Back. A wise old head. It's much slower. It's much slower. We're looking at three or four seconds slower to the table. This is now very tight. Slower through the weave, no question about it. Losing time all the time. Are they going to be quick enough? Come, come. Come, come. Terrific control. Nicely into the tunnel. That's good. No mistakes now. They might just make it. Oh, this is terrific stuff. It's very close indeed, but that is a clear round. No faults for the team. 305.77, and Bretford just hang on. Confirmation of that result. Bretford there with 305.77, just head Peter Lee Dog Trading Club into second place. You're the best thing I've ever had. And this is Amber. She's an Australian Silky Terrier. We called her Amber, because she's like an amber nectar. <laughs> this is Zebedee, a pet name. His pedigree name is Time for Gossip, to make people talk about him. This is called my lovely boy, because he was a beautiful little dog puppy in the litter. 
This little bitch is called Bill Tudes. Let's move it because she moves very, very fast. She demands the ring. Leju a more jolly fine. Longer than the dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, he doesn't live in a kennel, so he doesn't really have a kennel name. Do you, then? He lives on the sofa. <laughs> oh, he's exceedingly naughty. <laughs> It's the turn now of the largest group in the show, the working group. And this year's judge at Crafts was Ellis Hume. This grand beast is an Anatolian shepherd dog, Zoot, or Telkari Effendi. At home with owner breeders Janet and Robin Hill, Zoot is renowned for his cobnut eating habits, carefully crunching and discarding the shells, apparently. Well, he should be strong enough to do. He's a mastiff type of dog, but built more on the lines of the Great Dane than the English mastiff. Always appears calm and constrained in the ring, although he can turn it on when his guarding abilities are needed. Typical fawn dog with the black mask of the Carabash version. Been in here in Britain for simply decades. Massive bone on that dog. Champion Bernfold Dawn Chorus, the distinctive livery of the Bernese Mountain Dog. Willow is a six-year-old bitch owned by Shandy Bridges from Cornwall and bred by Anne Wells. They're striking dogs, aren't they, Mike? Yeah, great cuddly bear of a dog with this most striking pattern of face markings. Caught the public fancy all too quickly for its own good when the breed arrived in this country some 30 years or so back and went through quite a few problem times. Now it's on the up again and it's a very popular act as a draft dog on fun days. Lovely dog. Omar, this four-and-a-half-year-old Bouvier de Flandre, was born in quarantine when he was imported by Carrie Wilberg. Champion Koenig's Omar now has 16 challenge certificates and was best in show at the National Working Breeds Championship show in 1995. Carrie seems to bring in one after the other, or perhaps breed them all, but they really are lovely, powerful herder cum garda, handled here by the lady who is chiefly responsible for the high standard of the breed, now popular with many police forces because they look threatening without having to prove it. Champion Merlin Midnight Marauder was named after Mitch in Baywatch by his owner breeders, the Seldons. Mitch was the top smooth collie puppy in 1993, and this craft was his sixth challenge certificate. Oh, that's not bad going. It's an elegant beastie, this smooth, with a style all of its own, and it's the smooth version of the lassie collie of the Hollywood era. A very special eye which would face down any recalcitrant old you with the wrong ideas and a positive athlete of a working dog. Lovely stride on it. Last year's top Doberman puppy was this striking young man, Ross, or champion Amazon Sound Machine, owned and bred by Clive and Nancy Evans from Tewkesbury. He's had a superb show career so far, winning nine cc's, and he's not yet two years old. No, that's quite something, isn't it? We get used to the idea that all Dobermans are black and tan. This one, of course, is the brown version, and he's won his way here to the top over 300 others. Not a giant of a dobe, but his lines make him look smaller because they're so neat and he moves very efficiently and effectively. Lucy here is described as a stroppy bitch to handle, and that wasn't by me, I can assure you. So owners Peter Garside and Margaret Fisher Garside have given handler Gary Gray a bit of a task, but he's managed to pilot Grinsdale's Lucy in the Sky at Garshira to best of breed at Cruft. I must say, Mike, we all tipped this one to get pulled in, out, didn't we? Indeed, and he's a very, very good handler. We're in a constant state of disagreement between those who cheer for the German Shepherd, those who call it the British Alsatian. But a bitch as sound as this should satisfy both camps. I think she's gorgeous. Mm. Now, Mike, I've got to get the pronunciation right here. This is a Hovavart? Well, by my book, it's a Hovavart. Hovavart. Paddy Holmeson Poseidon is a baby at just 16 months old, and he was bred and lives at home with the Richardsons from Sleaford. He was called Poseidon because they're keen on scuba diving, but apparently Paddy hates water. <laughs> oh, gracious me. Th this golden colour is, if anything, the rarer of the colours because a lot of them are black and tan. But it's got a splendid tone to it, and after a long period of waiting in the wings, the breed is starting to become recognised. It comes from the Black Forest, and any luck it'll turn out as well as their ghetto. Swan White Red Rosina, or Rosie for short, is a two-year-old pincher bitch who was bred by Mr Leggett and is owned by Anne Hardley from Suffolk. 
the middle of the range character in the red livery, very square in height to length ratio, built on working lines, an attractive breed, just getting a proper toehold on the British show scene. Makes a pleasing family dog, but needs intelligent handling to get the best out of it. Looking slightly overawed there, perhaps, it in was this a big heck ring. of a big ring, isn't it, for a fairly small dog to get round. Winning the first ever best of breed with challenge certificates on offer for the breed here at Crufts must make Smarty's owner breeder Diane Mottram very proud. My Beard's Wizin is a three and a half year old Polish lowland sheepdog whose father and mother between them have been Britain's top winning Polish since 1991. Yeah, it's a breed which has made extraordinary progress since its arrival in Britain no time at all ago. The original import stock was obviously high quality and well selected. Thank goodness we don't have to wrap our tongues around the native name of the Polski Aksarek Nidzini. I'm glad it was you that did that, not me. <laughs> the ever popular Rottweiler, and this is an Irish champion, ever ready deep purple, or Will at home with owners Noel Beggs and June Wall. Will is a very special boy as he was from their first litter and a litter that they actually had to hand rear, and that is a nightmare job. No sleep for at least a month. <laughs> I can believe that. It's a huge entry as ever here at Crafts. 300 Rottweilers, topped from the open dog class by this Irish bred two and a bit year old. Well, those were some of the best of breeds that didn't make it into Ellis Hume's final lineup. These were the dogs that did. But topping the working group for 1997 was this gorgeous Samoyed, Zamoyski Lucky Casanova at Roybridge, owned by Carol Hamilton and handled by her granddaughter. And with that winner from the working group, our sixth finalist is now ready to enter the competition for Best in Show. And here are those six group winners. From the Terrier group, the Cairn champion, Kin Kim Ludwig. And from the Hound group, the Petit Basset, Griffin von Dion, de Boucher Cessin. The Yorkshire Terrier won the toy group, champion as Million Mystification. The utility group, the Japanese Akita, champion Octumi Love Action. The American Cocker Spaniel came through as top of the gun dogs, show champion Bodov Pistols at Dawn with Afterglow. And in the working group, the Samoyed champion Zamoyski Lucky Casanova at Roybridge. And in this magnificent setting of the main ring, the judge, Terry Thorne, was about to make his decision. He looked at all six. What a choice. Six super dogs. And we all had our separate tips, but it was going to be the Yorkshire Terrier that took Crufts' best in show for 1997, champion Osmillion Mystification, with Osman Samija heading for that podium and that enormous trophy. What a moment for them. Well, you can see how pleased he is. And we thought for a moment that Terry Thorne was going to pick the Samoyed in the reserve, but then he turned left, and it was the American Cocker Spaniel, Dexter. Show champion Bodo pistols at dawn with Afterglow with Mike Gadsby. Such a good combination of Handler and Dodbiss, they really deserve the award. No question, though, about the winner, and no argument either. Champion Osmillion Mystification, Justin, five years old, a great moment of triumph for Osman Samajan. And that's all from Crofts for this year. We really hope that you've enjoyed our coverage. And we'll definitely be back again next year for Crofts 1998. We do hope you'll be able to join us then. But until then, from Peter, from me and from all of the team here, bye-bye.